Okay, uh, welcome to a new tutorial series. Um, in this series I want to explain how to use Python and I want to start actually from scratch. So I will explain how to install it, how to make the first steps in Python and then later how to uh, yeah, write your own small programs by using even external libraries. However, before we come there, I would like to motivate this tutorial a little bit and um, also give a small motivation why you should use Python. Um, yeah, of course, one of the biggest motivation I think is that Python is a quite modern language. It's also continuously developed further. Yeah, so um, the, you can expect that if a bug is found in the interpreter, maybe after a few weeks, even there is a new version with this bug fix. So um, this works works quite well. Um, and of course, one advantage of Python is that it has a very uh, broad field of possible applications. So whatever kind of problem you can imagine, there are with very high probability already packages that you can install in order to solve this problem. Yeah, so um, either you use a package maybe from the standard library, which is already very huge, yeah, or you install it externally via, with the help of, for example, um, the package manager of Python, or even you can download packages from websites and implement them quite easily. Yeah. Uh, another um, advantage is, of course, that Python is nowadays also an object-oriented language, yeah? so you don't have any disadvantages compared to other languages like C++. You can define, in addition to functions, classes, for example, you can inherit from them, you can use uh, member variables and functions and so on. So it's, it's a, quite, um, uh, a quite huge and a very powerful language in this case. And I think that the biggest advantage is that um, you can actually learn it quite easily. Yeah? So um, uh, within a few days, you, you know all the functionality in Python, which is important to, to write your own programs. And you will also see throughout the course that when you know some fundamental basic concepts, then it's very simple to go even further, find to more further tutorials maybe in the internet, find um, help in different forums and so on. There's also a large community of Python users actually. So you find uh, many people maybe having the same problem like you. Um, then of course, because it's easy to, to learn, it's also it's also readable. Yeah? So um, if, you, if you write a code and you give it to your colleague, for example, even without inserting too many comments, it will be very easy for your colleague to understand what your intention was uh, just because it has a very easy syntax and uh, even it's not recommended to insert too many comments because it will make uh, the code even more unreadable. Um, then another I would say advantage some people would call it disadvantage I'm also not exactly sure about it but this is dynamic typing in Python. Yeah? So um, in contrast to other languages as for example C++ um, you don't have to define the type of the variable uh, that you declare. So for example, if, if you want to, in C++, if you want to declare a, a double variable, you have to explicitly say double, then the variable name and so on. An integer has to be int and so, and so on, yeah. Um, and in Python, you don't do that. You only insert the data and then uh, the interpreter automatically uh, recognize what kind of uh, variable it should be, how many memory should be allocated and so on. But of course, this makes also the whole program, program more heavy and uh, it, it can uh, maybe also affect the runtime a little bit. Then um, maybe regarding readability, one other advantage is the structure itself. Uh, in case of other programming languages, you have sometimes curly brackets in order to create blocks uh, uh, underneath functions or something. Uh, and in case of, of Python, uh, this is much simpler. You only use an indent, and then you can uh, define a block with respect to the uh, to the number of spaces, for example, which you use. And this is quite an, a nice concept, uh, which I personally like a lot. And I I think this is one of the main advantages of Python. Of course, there are also uh, drawbacks. There are disadvantages, uh, and one of this is uh, the runtime. Uh, of, of a Python program, I think, because it's an interpreted language, not a compiled compilation language, as for example, a C or C++, all the code which you write is interpreted on the fly. Uh, when you write a code, you hand over to the interpreter, it has to actually transfer, uh, transfer this code into C code, 
and then uh, uh, run this and this takes a lot of time uh, and uh, some some programs are maybe a factor five six slower than a program which is written in, in native C or native C++ maybe even so um, if, if you if this is an issue for your programs then uh, you should maybe switch to another language but if if this is not so much problematic then you can really benefit of all the advantages of Python and try to take the best from from this and uh, yeah learn Python with the help of this tutorial which I'm presenting now. Okay, as promised, we will start now with the installation of Python. And there are many possibilities to do that. Now, if you use Linux, for example, uh, it's usually very easy. You can use the package manager of your distribution, for example, Aptitude or something like that, and then you can install this. Or you could use uh, Snap. Now, there it's also, I think, included if you use Ubuntu-based system. But if you use another system, you also have some package managers to do that normally. In case of Mac OS, it's also not so difficult. But since I don't have a Mac, I cannot explain it uh, with this. So. I, I want to now stick to Windows because I think also most of the people who I'm addressing are using Windows. So I want to explain it now uh, on, on the basis of what Microsoft um, is recommending to do. So I will not download it from the website of Python and install it, but I will use now the Microsoft Store for this purpose. So what we can do, we can open here this Microsoft Store uh, and then go here and type in Python. Yeah, and when you do that uh, and press enter, then you can see that there are different Python versions available. Um, so it's always recommended to install the newest one, which is in this case 3.10. In some cases, maybe it's necessary to go to older ones, especially when you are working in a team, yeah, which which needs or which works with older versions. But in this case, we can stick to the newest one, 3.10. Yeah, and then uh, the only thing which we have to do uh, after it appears, we have to click here on install. And now, yeah, everything is done actually automatically. Yeah, the downloading, the installation happens. So if you do this manually and you download it from the website, it might be that you have to set a few more variables in order to yeah, make sure that it's recognized by uh, by Windows. But in this case, uh, since this is done via, via the Microsoft Store, we can be sure that after the installation is done, everything works more or less out of the box. So now, as you can see, the installation is done. Yeah, so uh, you could find now the uh, the program, yeah, uh, the interpreter in the start menu. However, I already created now a desktop icon, so it's easier a little bit to to access that. Um, yeah, and now you can uh, you can can open this, double click, and then I have to shift it from the other screen to here. And now this is the interpreter, how it looks like. So you see here the the Python uh, version number. And a few information about your system. Uh, in this case, it's a 64-bit version which we installed. And uh, you can also get some information about copyright, credits, license, and so on, uh, uh, if you want. But in this case, uh, we directly uh, dive into the topic and yeah, yeah, write our own small code. Uh. So these three arrow signs, which you can see here, indicate that now uh, input is required. And you see here the cursor blinking. So um, let's suppose the easiest thing which we can do is, of course, using Python as a calculator. Yeah, this, um, um, I think there's, there's nothing easier than that. So we can write, for example, here 3 plus 4. And when we press Enter, you can see that now a 7 appears here. Yeah? Um, so it, it works quite well. Yeah? Also, if you write 5 plus 8, for example, 13, yeah, you can also use a little bit more complicated calculations, of course. So, for example, you could write 3 times um, 5 plus 8, for example. Yeah, and now you can see the result is 39. Also, this works quite well. Of course, this is not everything which you can do with, with Python. Yeah. Um, but before we come to, uh, to, to the point that we really write some script, yeah, there's some other thing which I can explain already on, on the basis of this interpreter here, uh, of, of the command line interpreter, actually. So we can define variables very easily. So for example, we can write here a equals 3, b equals, uh, let's suppose, 5, and c equals uh, 8. And then we can type in exactly the formula which we have uh, written before. Uh, so we can write here a times 
five uh, a times b plus c sorry this is english keyboard and then again we get as a result 39 so this is quite simple yeah? you can use now python uh, in, in a very simple way as a as a calculator yeah? if you want to give out strings it's a little bit more complicated so it's not enough that you just type in the string for this you have to use the print command yeah? so you can write for example here print and then you can uh, use either single or double quotation and in this case maybe we can use double quotation then it's a little bit uh, easier so we can write here print and then uh, hello world for example and then again double quotation and brackets closing and when we type this in then we can see now here our string hello world which we typed in it's just returned there now so this is also very simple and uh, yeah this is already your first python program which you have written actually it's it's very easy going now but of course as i said um, this interpret uh, this this command line way how to do this um, is not uh, so direct input in the up interpreter is not the best way how to do that uh, it's not reproducible um, so the best thing is to to write the code into a text file and in an ASCII file and then uh, run the interpreter with this file. There are different possibilities how to do that. Yeah? So you can either install um, or you can use a text editor that you like to use, for example, a standard editor of uh, Windows, or you could also use Notepad++, which I sometimes use. But both the um, editors have the disadvantage that you have to store the file, you have to go to the path you have to run python um, which which takes a little bit of time which is annoying maybe for new users it's um, it's even too difficult so the best thing which you can do is to download an ide um, development environment which you can use then in order to run your code in a quite simple way and this we will also do so for the time being i will close this here and we will go back to our microsoft store and we search now for visual studio Oh. Yeah, this, this I found is one of the best programs that you can use for that purpose. There are other programs available, of course, whatever you, you prefer, you can install. But I, I would say this one for a new user of Python, it's quite easy going. So now we can also install that by just clicking on install. And again, this will take a little bit of time because the program is quite heavy. And um, as soon as this is finished, we can try to use this. Okay, now the installation is complete. Uh, I again created a desktop icon here so we can easily access this later in future. So now we can just simply double click on this and open this. Yeah, and now you can see it's, um, <clears throat> it's looking quite simple. Um, the first thing which you would like to do, um, I would uh, like to create a new file. And then I would like to tell uh, Visual Studio that we want to create a Python file so it can later install all the relevant packages. And we can now save this under any under any file name what you want. So for example, in this case, we just call this hello world.py. Uh, and then we can also choose here from the list Python. I think it will also recognize this automatically, but it's maybe better to do it in such a way then we can make sure that uh, it recognizes this as a Python program. So now we have here our program, uh, hello world pi. And normally uh, if you run this program for the first time, it will ask you here in the lower right corner to install Python bindings. And this is important to do. So you click on install uh, just because if you are not doing this, then uh, it will not, it will have problems in executing the file. It will be more problematic to do that. I have done this already. I just clicked on install. So now the installation is actually complete and I can directly run the program. If you have not done this, then uh, I recommend to do this in any case. Okay. And now I shift the camera here down because uh, we will need this, uh, this button here. Uh, for running the Python file, for executing it, actually. Uh, so, yeah, in principle, it, as I said, it's very simple. In, in a few minutes, this package is installed and can be used. So we can directly start now by defining two variables, for example, a uh, equals uh, b, uh, a equals uh, 3, for example, b equals uh, 10. And now, if we only write here uh, a plus b, uh, plus b, uh, 
uh, and we run this program here for this running of the program we have to press here on this uh, on this small arrow it will not show anything yeah? um, in any case if we want to if we wrote a script in a file and we want to print something in the terminal here down yeah? it's always important that you have to that you use the print command so in this case we have to write here print a plus b and then we run the program and now you can see here uh, just the number 13 is written down so this worked quite well so now we have actually again written a small um, calculator and the same we can also use for strings so this is an integer or two integers which we used now we can also uh, type in for example a equals hello and b equals world and uh, now again a plus b so if you add two strings they are just put uh, behind each other yeah? so when you now uh, run the program you can see now the result is actually hello world which is just what we have written here yeah so this also works quite well uh, another thing which we could also maybe try here is um, we we define again two uh, integers for example three and um, and uh, five and then we print here a uh, divided by b and now we can run this and now you can see automatically it is shown 0 0.6 yeah if you do this with c++ for example or c yeah? like you define two integers and then you divide one by the other one it will give you in this case a zero yeah? just because uh, the it, the result has to be an integer yeah? in this case python automatically recognize that you divide two integers but uh, you expect as a result a double yeah so in this case it's uh, it's just um, yeah for convenience so these are the as I said the standard things which you can do I don't want to go now into functions classes and so on this we will go step by step but now you have all the fundamental tools already which you need to know in order to write your own small Python program maybe one additional thing yeah if you if you want to for example uh, write here that the result of a plus b is this so you write here uh, for example um, we can use double quotes result and then uh, double dot plus um, a divided by b and you run this program yeah? you will see there is an error message because uh, it a, a divided by b is as i said a float number or double number and the uh, result is a string so in this case if you want to add this to this string here you can also make a space here you have to convert this double number into a string this you only have to keep in mind uh, when you give out um, a number and a string you have to convert this number into a string so we can write here str this is the command for converting a number into string a divided by b and now if we run this you can see now result a double dot 0 0.6 so this works also quite easy yeah and uh, as i said this is everything which i want to show today i hope that it was beneficial yeah you can now go you can just play around with this what you what you as you can do with python yeah. and uh yeah if if you find it useful and if you like the video please hit the like button please subscribe my channel in order to see in future more videos related to that and uh, if you have any questions, as usual, put it in the comment section. Otherwise, uh, see you soon for the next tutorial video.